So you're logged on to Languages at Warwick and you can see your home page and what I want to show you is how you can edit your messaging settings. The whole of your home page can be customised using the customise this page button. So to edit your messaging settings what you need to do is to open the three bars here and what you'll see is a link under my profile settings to messaging. If we click that you'll then see some messaging settings cannot be changed so it'll say disallowed, it's greyed out. Others can be by using the tick box so you can decide how you want to receive some messages whether you want to get them in an activity stream which will turn up on the bottom of your My Home page whether you need an email or an alert and in some cases it's best to have more than one in case you're not checking your emails over Christmas or whatever. So this is where you need to come to make sure that you get your messages um, and particularly to make sure that forum conversations and things are properly um, notified. Also under this um, those three lines here you can see under my profile settings edit profile. So let's have a look at that. How can you change your profile within Languages at Warwick? Your profile is visible to people on your course and visible to people you interact with through Languages at Warwick. Um, your profile is responsible for the little image that turns up in the menu here and really here this is where you get the chance to think about your identity when you're interacting with people from other countries and other cultures. So some aspects of your profile have already been completed such as your um, password and username, don't change those. You've then got some information and you may find that the default that's been put in for city and town isn't correct so you can change that. Um, and again by default your server's local time as in UK time will be the time that is used. This is where you can write a profile area, a description area here. So this is called a text box this little toggle key is very important. If I click that, you can see it opens up and I've got lots more choices in terms of the font and font size, adding images, even adding video um, and emoticons. And what you'll be encouraged to do whilst you're working with us uh, through Languages at Warwick is to express your profile in the language you're learning. So depending on your level, you'll have the opportunity to fill this in, in the language you're learning, um, as well as in English. You've then got some spaces in your profile to the, which are optional, which can add additional information. But this is the important one, the user picture. Now we do use a plugin for Gravatar. Uh, Gravatar is an online way of managing your profiles. So if you have um, a profile picture in Gravatar by default, um, your Gravatar picture will be picked up, but you can choose your own profile picture, just drag it into um, the box here and uh, delete the other one if you prefer. Uh, you might want to put a picture description in here, this picture is a, a Second Life image. Um, any image that really conveys something about you appropriately and um, that isn't going to cause embarrassment or offend others. So there's your user profile area and your picture. Um, when it comes to additional interests and things and optional fields, you've got additional things you might wish to fill in here, but just take a look. Click the um, uh, little triangle there to expand and take a little look. Uh, and then just click update profile. And from there, you'll have your profile ready to interact with other people. Right, I'm going to show you how to customise this My Home page. By default, you'll see a welcome message from us that just explains the site and some blocks that we've already put in there. An important one here is the network service block, and that's because 
Um, many of you will be using Mahara as an e-portfolio tool whilst you're working in languages at Warwick. Um, so leave those. But the others you can see here on my page are ones that I have put there purely because they're feeds that are of interest to me and they're the sorts of things that I might be able to pick up quickly and pass to my students. So how did I put those there? Well, first of all, what I would need to do is to click customize this page. So I will click that and the page will refresh. And then what I'll see is that when I scroll down to the bottom, you see now I've got some additional icons around my um, boxes that are already there. But if I scroll down to the bottom of the customize this page, I can then see that I've got something here that says add a block. In the add a block area, if I choose HTML and let that refresh, what I will then have is a very flexible um, text block. OK, so I've done that. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom again to find it. It will come up at the moment as new HTML block. So I can see it here. And then I'm going to click on the little wheel and click configure this block. Now I've got a dialog box that asks me to give this a title. So I'm going to give this a title for useful links. And the reason I'm going to do this is because this HTML block is going to give me a very quick link into Central Moodle because many of you will have courses on Central Moodle. You could also put maybe um, uh, My WBS if you work at the business school. So I just typed the text for Central Moodle in there. Then I'm going to highlight it. It's turned a beautiful shade of pink. I'll click Insert Edit Link. And now I'm going to go off and find Central Moodle. So I'm just going to Google Moodle Warwick. And there we are. I'm going to copy the URL from the address bar for Central Moodle. Come back into here, paste it into this HTML box. I'm going to make it so it opens in a new window rather than disturbing my navigation. And then click Insert. So now you can see I've got a link here to Central Moodle. And what I'm going to do is then just save the changes. And once that's refreshed, I'll be able to see that useful links block. As I scroll down here, here's my useful links block. Now I might want to move it on the page. So I just come to the crosshairs, click and drag and move it wherever I want it to be. So I've moved it a little bit further up the page. So this is a flexible space for those of you um, comfortable with editing. Um, it's a fairly straightforward editing interface on a web page. If you've never edited a web page before, congratulations, this is where you can learn.